An Experiment with an Air Pump is a stage play by Sheila Stevenson first published in Great Britain in 1998. It was first performed on February 12, 1988 at the Royal Exchange Theatre in Manchester, England. The setting of the lay is in a house in Newcastle upon Tyne while the time is of two parallel stories that occur 200 years apart that is 1799 and 1999. The play begins with the year 1799, cast frozen in place while performing Joseph Wright's famous 1768 painting of an experiment on a bird in the air pump in which a bird's oxygen supply is cut off. The lead scientist Fenwick's daughters, Maria and Harriet, worried about the bird's survival and Maria had named the bird after her fiancé, Edward. The experiment was performed with success as the bird survived. Later Roger, Fenwick's colleague scientist, suggests scientific research proposals New Year's Eve lecture series that Fenwick rejects because none of the suggested proposals were imbued with the spirit of Enlightenment but a fellow young scientist Armstrong reproaches Fenwick of rejecting proposals based on personal biases. Fenwick's wife Susanna continually tries to engage in the conversation but is readily ignored or rebuffed by her husband who greatly patronizes her due to her lack of scientific knowledge. All the while an angry mob protests outside against rising fish prices. Unbothered by the mob, Fenwick asserts that once mass protestations start, the country will undertake a revolution from monarchy to democracy. Harriet, Maria and Isabel enter to perform a play that Fenwick declines citing that he's busy that hurts Harriet. Aspiring to be a scientist like her father, Harriet wrote the play as a hymn to progress in which she's dressed as Britannia that symbolizes the future full of empire, industry, science, wealth and reason while Maria's dressed as a shepherdess representing the, the past unspoiled wilderness and an ideal of pastoral innocence. The domestic hunchback maid, Isabel dressed as a sheep with infantile lines displays acute intelligence despite being not formally educated. Roger and Armstrong disagree regarding Dr. Farley's dishonest method of procuring dead bodies for anatomy demonstrations which Roger views as morally wrong but Armstrong considers such methods as valuable for scientific advancement. Armstrong becomes obsessed with her spinal deformity and attempts to woo her with his declarations of love, gifting of a book of Shakespeare's sonnets and a gold necklace. Regardless of her early distrust, Isabel develops feelings for him. But unable to keep the charade of love and on Roger's repeated insistence, Armstrong confesses that he was only interested in Isabel due to her extraordinary malformation and this morbid curiosity aroused him. A disgusted Roger calls him amoral, corrupt and depraved. Isabel overhears this confession and hangs herself leaving a letter implicating Armstrong but not only hides the letter but also suffocates a dying Isabel. The 1799 era part of the play ends with everyone assembled around Isabel's coffin, again mirroring Joseph Wright painting. As the clock strikes midnight announcing the arrival of 19th century, Fenwick toasts to whatever lies ahead, uncharted lands and uncertainties. The 1999 timeline of the play begins in the same house once owned by Fenwick by a female research scientist, Ellen along with her husband, Tom, a recently unemployed literature professor. They're packing boxes to shift out of the house due to expensive maintenance. Ellen hesitates in accepting her colleague Kate's offer on funding her genetic research work on gene editing due to ethical misgivings that Tom also harbors. Phil, a builder conducting a building survey, believed in conspiracy theories like spontaneous combustion and alien abductions. He's doubtful of scientists as he believed that humans should not interfere in matters of nature that further fuels Ellen's moral dilemma but Kate, in favor of scientific progress disapproves Phil's backward reasoning. A box of human bones with missing vertebrae presumable Isabel's is found underneath the kitchen sink by Tom that greatly disturbs him as he although they never get to know whose bones they were. In the end, Tom and Ellen have a frank discussion in which they realize their individual passions of art and science are equally crucial to the human experience. This era also ends on New Year's Eve, 1999 with Ellen and Tom toasting to uncertainties of life. Kate's statement discovery is neutral ethics is for philosophers alludes to the dilemma between science and morality is the crux of the play that raises ethical concerns surrounding scientific progress. Characters like Fenwick, Roger, 
Armstrong and Allen struggle with ethical consideration of scientific research and advancements for the purpose of satisfying scientific curiosity and promoting scientific enlightenment. The Victorian gentlemen scientists maneuver around moral concerns of grave desecrations as they steal bodies for medical dissections while the modern female scientists have discovered ways to identify and edit genes which can result in fetus abortions or commercial uses when sold to third parties like private healthcare and insurance firms. On the other hand, Phil is skeptical and resistant towards scientific advancements, emphasizing concerns about ethical implications, interference with natural order, and potential negative consequences of science. At the start of the play Fenwick's rejection of scientific proposals based on personal biases rather than scientific merit highlights the subjective nature of his moral judgments. Harriet's play represented progress in industry, reflecting the belief in the prospect of scientific progressions to shape society and improve lives. Fenwick's dismissal of Harriet's play, which symbolizes art and creativity, reflects a bias towards science. However, the ending conversations between Alan and Tom highlight the importance of embracing both artistic and scientific pursuits, recognizing their mutual significance. A prominent theme of the play is gendered power dynamics which lead to emotional and physical abuse. Fenwick dismisses, patronizes, and undermines the contributions of his wife based on her perceived lack of scientific merits that creates power imbalance in an already strained relationship. Susanna turns to alcohol to cope with intellectual belittling and emotional distance by her husband. However, the modern Ellen is an academic powerhouse and the family breadwinner while her husband is unemployed. The maid, Isabel, faces objectification and manipulative mistreatment due to her physical condition by Armstrong who exploits her vulnerability and isolation. Stevenson subtly also references the themes of social class and transformation through the character of Isabel and the angry mob outside Fenwick's home. The angry mob protesting against the monarchy's tax on fish hints the tension between the social classes and the general societal unrest yet the unaffected attitude of Fenwick suggests the selfish and unbothered attitude of the monarchs and the elites. Moreover Fenwick's passion towards the pursuit of enlightenment and disdain for royalty may also allude towards the French Revolution and change for democracy. The opinionated Isabel is the Scottish hunchback made of Fenwick and Susanna who, contrary to her class and the time, knows how to read and write which contributes towards her strong sense of identity and individuality. Belonging to the class of servants and domestics, she is thought of as an object of fascination and amusement by an upper-class Armstrong, who is attempts to seduce Isabel to examine her physical condition but it ends in her committing suicide. Her death mirrors the air pump experiment where the innocent bird dies in the name of scientific advancement. The metafictional dramatic start of recreating Joseph Wright's painting blurs the boundaries between art and reality. This self-consciousness about its own status as a theatrical performance calls attention to the constructed nature of storytelling. The play features a fragmented narrative structure by juxtaposing two timelines set 200 years apart. It critiques and subvert dominant structures and beliefs regarding established gender roles and scientific ethical qualms under the guise of irony, humor, and satire. The play examines the darker aspects of human nature, including curiosity driven by morbid fascination, objectification of others, and the consequences of unchecked desires.